Today, the catastrophic state of the conventional banking system has once again shown just how necessary it is to re-examine and reinvent our money system. There already are several alternative currency systems in use, such as the LET system and time dollars. These systems are based on the same simple principle the medieval market used, interest-free, self-issued credit backed by goods and services. Other advocates of monetary reform propose that governments should issue national currencies on the same basis, interest-free, self-issued credit to be collected back in taxes. And that same basic idea is the foundation of another proposal, the digital coin system, which takes the concept of self-issued credit further than ever before. The digital coin is really two coins. The first kind is the perpetual coin, which is permanent and created in limited supply. Perpetual coin is designed to be the value unit of the whole system, like the silver penny in the medieval example. Everything is always priced in perpetual coin. However, its actual presence in trade isn't required because commerce is conducted in the second type of digital coin, the credit coin. Credit coin is an online electronic trading medium issued by producers as virtual goods and services, just like the vouchers issued by producers in the medieval market. Credit coin is spent by the issuer in the process of creating or supplying the issuer's goods and services. For instance, an issuer that was a corporation or government would spend most of its credit coin on the wages of employees. The employees would spend the credit coin at their local stores, who would in turn buy from local or distant suppliers, who would in turn pay their suppliers and employees with it, and they would then spend the same credit coin in their local stores, and so on. Circulated and spent via internet, any given credit coin could travel anywhere, enabling any number of transactions having nothing to do with the issuer just as Anton's bread vouchers could be used to allow the seamstress to buy from the shoemaker, the shoemaker to buy from the butcher, and so on. However, unlike the medieval market, there would be no end of market meeting at which all outstanding credits are brought together to be exchanged and redeemed by the issuer. Therefore, the first refinement the system needs is a built-in incentive to ensure that every credit coin ultimately returns to its issuer. This is accomplished by offering a bonus on redemption. The issuer offers more product if the product is bought with the issuer's own credit coin. Or put another way, the issuer honors its own coin at a higher value than any other. This bonus redemption can be designed so that it is limited to a time period of the issuer's choosing. This sets a target period for maximum redemption, thus making it much more likely that the credit coin will be spent on the issuer's product and services when the issuer wants it to be spent. Of course, there would also be differences in demand for the products and services of individual issuers and different degrees of issuer reliability. Therefore, credit coins would vary in value over time and go up and down relative to each other, just as national currencies and corporate stocks do today. So the second refinement has to be a means of determining the relative worth of different credit coins as expressed in perpetual coin. This can be accomplished by an automated online marketplace that tracks the value of each issuer's coin by comparing the offers to sell to the offers to buy for that coin. At each transaction, the credit coins involved automatically access this online marketplace and revalue themselves according to the real-time demand for that coin which corresponds directly to the current demand for the issuer's actual products and services. As a basic formula, this is extremely simple. At any given moment, any given credit coin is worth its current buy-sell ratio times one perpetual coin. 
a perfect balance of trade always results in parity with perpetual coin. To clarify, if buy orders exceed sell orders, the coin will be worth proportionately more than one perpetual coin, and if sell orders exceed buy orders, the coin will be worth less. The value of the coin automatically adjusts to the supply and demand for that coin. As all pricing is expressed in perpetual coin, the issuer will unavoidably take in more of its credit coin per unit of product if the coin is below parity with perpetual coin and less per unit if it is above. Therefore, as the issuer's products are sold, any excess or shortage in the supply of that issuer's coin is automatically corrected, pushing the credit coin back towards parity with perpetual coin. This is just one of several powerful features of the proposed digital coin system. In this proposed new system, there is no borrowing from future generations. Money is not abstract, nor is it some item of precious scarcity. It is virtual goods and services, backed by actual goods and services. Spending power is inescapably linked to earning power, and earning power is tied directly to the production of real goods and services. With this system, no one with productive capacity and the confidence of potential customers could ever be held back by a lack of money. And on the other hand, no one would ever be able to issue this credit coin money without offering some product or service in demand to back it up. Digital coin is a proposal for a radically free way to structure an economy, ending the monopoly of fraudulent credit and irredeemable fiat money currently imposed upon us by banks and governments. In so doing, digital coin entrusts the creation of our money to the productive people who create the real wealth that our money actually represents. Digital coin is a blend of high technology, simple arithmetic, and a common sense idea of money that was well understood and successfully practiced long ago. To further investigate the possibilities of digital money, please visit digitalcoin.info.